which is let's reel them in audience acquisition, engagement, and retention. See, there are 40 plus OTT platforms approximately in India, and the consumer is spoiled for choice, as we all are. In a subscription economy, the task of OTTs does not just stop at acquiring customers, but keeping them on the platform. So how do they do that? That's a big question. And the answer to that, we will find out right away. For this, we are being joined by our industry leaders. So can we have a big round of applause for all Balaji's Senior Vice President Marketing, Partnerships and Revenue, Ms. Divya Dikshit. Can we please invite you on stage, ma'am? We have with us Indemol Shine India's Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Gaurav Gokhale. Would like to invite you as well on stage, sir. Okay, I think she's not here. Uh, from Viacom 18's Media Private Limited Product and Marketing Leader, we have Mr. Rohit Tikmani. Can we please invite you on stage? We have with us Mr. Zubin Dubash from Shimaru Entertainment COO. He is Shimaru Me and Digital Business. Welcome, sir. And this session will be moderated by business consultant and former network vice president strategy at Intent Media Network, Ms. Mansi Darbar. It's Mr. Mansi Darbar? Oh, Ms. Mansi Darbar. Okay. Him? Okay. I was not informed. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. Karishma. Along with them, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Dev Dutta Potnis, who is the SVP Revenue and Corporate Strategies. Please welcome, sir. Today, the topic of our panel is indeed an engaging one. All our business bosses seated out here are going to talk about the most important people in our life for who we create entertainment, entertainment, and only entertainment. Yes. We're talking about our audiences, our viewers. So how do the streaming platforms and the big bosses seated out here reel them in via acquisition, engagement, and at the same time, maintain retention? So let's hear it straight from the bosses out here. And please give them a big round of applause. So can I please uh, start with uh, requesting each of you uh, to give a quirky introduction of yours in one line, please. I'll start with Divya in that order. Hi, guys. Um, can you all hear me? Right. I can hear myself, which means you all can hear me. Okay. Uh, I um, work with All Balaji. I am a marketing person who's grown into handling businesses. Uh, I think more than that, I also have a personality. So I am a working mom. I've got three kids. Uh, one has two legs, the other two have four legs. And I think I, I, I survive a lot on black coffee. Uh, I love watching content. Uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. And I have a husband as well. Yeah, that's me. Hi, I'm Rohit Tikmani. My favorite OTT service is Woot because they pay my salary mostly. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, I had uh, product and growth at uh, Woot, Woot and Woot Kids. Uh, quirky, I don't know about quirky, but uh, this is my first uh, media and entertainment job. I've been here only one and a half years, so just still learning from uh, the content gurus here. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Dev. I work with this animation studio called Cosmos Maya. I am representing a content creator. We also have a very strong digital presence with our platform being on YouTube. Uh, speaking of quirk, I really love clothes. And the rest of it, I think you'll know when I speak. Thank yeah. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Zubin, Zubin Dubash. Uh, my left brain makes me the CEO of uh, Shimaru Me, our OTT, and the digital businesses of Shimaru Entertainment. My right brain makes me a poet, a writer, a singer, and a voiceover artist. That's about it. 
Thank you very much for the quirky introduction. It was indeed, um, you know, interesting to know a little more than, you know, about yourselves and your lives. Um, so what is the first question or, you know, what is the first word or sentence that comes into your mind, uh, you know, when I say the word audience? Starting with Divya. Everybody and anybody who sees videos is audience for me, right? I wouldn't say, you know, somebody who watches only OTT platform or broadcast. So for us, audiences, anyone who consumes video content, right? Uh, now that I can keep adding to this and I can keep saying, you know, now there's Audible and there's Pocket FM and these people are also eating into my pie, right? So I would, let me, let me just expand this a little bit and say anybody who's interested in content is my audience, as simple as that. For me, audience is a human being who's looking to escape the drudgery of day-to-day -day life uh, in whatever form of content that gets their goat. You know, I'm going to kind of answer this. This reminds me of that game in Kuch Kuch Hota Hai, when, you know, I'll say one word and you have to say one word. So the moment you say audience, actually the first word that comes to my mind is entertainment. Because audiences are seekers of entertainment and I feel blessed that I work with an organization that allows us to kind of entertain them, especially being in animation. Uh, we are entertaining kids. So a human being's first interf interface with content comes from animation content. And it's a delicate responsibility as it is a very empowering and at the same time, on one level, being a parent of two, I would say this, it's also a noble profession because we are also working as digital nannies in that sense. In today's day and age, we've all been through COVID and you know, there's a significant amount of struggle when all of us at some point are ja kuch So, you know, being that person who's part of a company that's providing that respite in some form really helps, uh, like makes me feel good about my job and you know, being connected with entertainment. And I'm a seeker of entertainment myself. So I'm an audience for all the OTT platforms. There's a question that was asked earlier. I would never answer that question with one name because I love them all. All of them give us business. So, so for me, an audience is anyone who uses all his five senses to entertain and consume content. Uh, another way, the way we look at audiences is that we look at them with extreme obsession. We are obsessed with delighting them and making sure that they are extremely happy with whatever we are delivering to them in sync with what their needs are. So my next question, um, you know, and we can start with Rohit is, uh, you know, so what is your strategy, um, you know, for acquiring audiences? So we have uh, two large businesses. We have an AWOD business and an SWOT business and our strategies for both are uh, very different. AWARD, of course, is all about reach and viewership and uh, to use a military analogy, uh, we like to carpet bomb when it comes to AWARD acquisition. Like the questions we ask ourselves are, uh, if uh, there are 600,000 Android phones that get unboxed every day in India, why does Boot only get 200, 250,000 installs? Why can't it get 450, 500,000 installs a day like WhatsApp gets, for example? So on AWOD, it's carpet bombing. Uh, on SWOD, it's mostly sharpshooting. Uh, WhatsApp, India, mouse are about 500 million, uh, but only about 10% of that transacts digitally. So with SWOD, uh, we like to shoot, sharpshoot for those 10% people and uh, uh, you know try and bring them in uh, to vote. So different businesses, different strategies, really. What about you, Zubin? So, uh, to be honest, I don't wish to spoil any party here, but I believe that AWOD does not make any money and it will, in the long run, it will never make money. It's a loss-making business from day one itself. So, for us, the way we look at uh, our OTT business, Chamaru Me, is that uh, we, we bunch them into cohorts of uh, needs that our customer wants, that the audiences want. And we then go all out to address those needs and then tell the customer to pay for it via SWOD. But to lure those customers in and say, taste before you buy, we do a bit of award so that he can taste the kind of content we're coming up with, and then we kind of give that content to him. So that's kind of a summary of what we do. 
Uh, to be specific, we work mainly in the area of Gujarati because that's one area that is definitely an untapped need and we started that journey about a year ago. Uh, we've uh, made sure that, our, that the entire uh, content strategy, right from pricing to customer delight and uh, agile mode of, of pricing and communicating is something that uh, we, are, uh, we have actually worked on and we've kind of succeeded in as well. One more thing we've, do we've done reasonably successfully is that, uh, I always say this, that people in the entire OTT domain or even audiences, nobody is platform loyal. So for that question earlier of which OTT is your favorite, I don't think you can ever have a favorite for life. People are not co platform loyal, they are content loyal. So they'll keep jumping around from platform to platform. To combat this, what we've done is, we've said we'll give you great content. To this cohort of Gujarati users, we said we'll give you great content. Our promise is that every week you'll get a new title, whether it's a movie, a web series, or a Natak, which is plays that Gujaratis really love. And that's our proposition from a consumer standpoint, saying you want content, we want you to come in as a subscriber who will get long-term benefit from, us, from a value of content that we are promising to you. And that's where we promise 52 new titles every year for our subscription promise. That's where the product proposition comes in. And along with that, we club it with pricing and then customer outcalling, making sure customers are welcomed and things like that. So that's it. Fantastic. What about Alt Balaji, Divya? So I'm not as intelligent as Zubin. Uh, and Zubin, you stole some of my lines, OK? Yeah. All right. No, but honestly, uh, I've been a vociferous advocate of SWOT because I believe that if the consumer doesn't see value in your product, uh, your business doesn't really have stable legs to stand upon. I'm, I'm a strong, strong advocate of SWOT. Having said that, we as a platform have also launched a award on the back of lockup, right? Because the moment was right, lockup was something that we wanted the world to see and we didn't really want to limit it behind the paywall. So we said, what better opportunity than to launch AWARD? But like Zubin rightly said, AWARD is not an easy business because what are you doing? You are uh, going to invest a substantial amount of money in creating traffic, browse, mouse, you will have to populate award constantly with library of fresh content that people want to come and catch up on. And then you're hoping at the back of it that your DAOs and mouse will make on the back of it into the advertising club for the advertisement revenue to come in where probably top 15 brands make up for almost 80% of the advertising revenue. So it's not an easy business, right? I'm not an advocate. Uh, I've done award and SWOT businesses before this. And uh, I think I strongly believe that in any uh, OTT business platform, if you are a combination, SWOT should be your 80% priority. That's where the consumer believes in your product is willing to pay for, for your product, will explore, will remain loyal. And while um, Zubin did say, and rightly so, that there is no consumer loyalty, right, in the world of media, because human mind is fickle and it wants to be entertained every minute. And you know, what's good for you is not good for me and vice versa. At least with SWOT, you have held the consumer back for a certain period of time, right? It gives you that time to be able to entertain, engage, retain the consumer, right? With the hopeful uh, assumption and obviously a lot of data science, a lot of analytics backing it to cross-sell, upsell when it's time for him to bounce. With a what? It's an everyday exercise. Everyday exercise. So I root for a squad. Rohit, would you like to say something to that? How does, because, you know, how does Viacom sort of combat this as they're bullish on AWARD and SWOT both? Yeah, we are probably the largest uh, AWARD business in the OTT space. Uh, the way our org is set up, the content strategy that, uh, that we have and our affiliation with uh, the TV channels that we have uh, lends itself very well to AWARD. Uh, 
I like Avon a lot. Uh, I think uh, India has a very shallow uh, subscription market. And if you want to scale, if uh, if you're as ambitious as uh, we are, uh, it's not an option uh, to rely only on S1 at the moment at least. Sure. Thank you. So, Dave, <clears throat> so I'm saying Cosmos Maya is, of course, you know, an animation studio, as we are all very well aware of. But um, at the same time, you also have a streaming platform of your own in the form of YouTube, right? So what is your strategy when it comes to YouTube? See, you know, uh, fortunately, uh, when we started the consumer interface, which is Wow Kids is our uh, YouTube uh, brand name, and we have about 77 million subscribers right now in the kids category across 35 channels, that's, that's a fair amount of niche that we've managed to get. We never really had a focus on becoming a platform because we are a production house at the outset. So what really started off was we've sold pay TV rights to someone, SVOD rights to someone. Again, SVOD as, as a seller because we are selling to B2B and B2C. In our B2B, all the platforms are our client. SVOD, of course, because that gives you upfront money. I completely agree with Divya on the logic that she said about the consumer. As content creators, that's our logic with SVOD as players. I mean, we've all done syndication at some point in time. Whenever there's like a discussion, there's an award deal coming up. That's the last deal you want to do as a content owner. Why? Because there are so many uncertainties. It's like a revenue share. You can't really have that assurance. And why not have the same yardstick for platforms as well? When I talk about our B2B sales. Speaking about B2C, for us, it's been really insightful because we never focused on building it at the outset. Whatever was, you know, hey, this window is open, there's no OTT player that's assigned right now. Let's try and put it out. Or for that matter, it started in 2016 uh, for us. And we've been producing content since 2012. So there's, and we produce a lot of content. We do like 50 half hours a month. So there's a lot of library. There was no SVOD player. So we're like, you know what, let's dabble with YouTube and see how it goes. Luckily, the content really took off and spoke for itself. Like there's one of our IPs, uh, it's doing like some... 200 million views a month and that's like one you know it's if I may say it's it's like the Nagin in that category or like the Nayak if I may use a parallel it's a show called Veer the Robo Boy yeah. so when the platform started growing and when we were kind of acquiring content for the platform so simple tha koi agar yaar ye naya show XYZ acquire kya uspe viewership nahi aara hai ek kaam karo Veer ka lead in de do same video tha, few hundred views se uske ek dam hundred thousand tak views aa jate hai so that's really been a strategy and I'm saying this uh, because of the fact that we've not focused on it in that sense. But now we know that we have seen so much viewership from India. The US doesn't come from the US, but the US is at par in the revenue. Which is, so somewhere diverting this audience and targeting there, we've made a niche for ourselves that in the 4 to 9 Hindi kids category, we are the world's largest YouTube platform. But does that mean that we can get a million dollars out of the US? Right now, the answer is no. Because diaspora bhi kitna dekhega. So we are trying to strategize and try and make that aspect a bit more viable. To then, you know, then say that, you know what, hum pay TV partners ke saar aage bad sakte. Let's not do pay TV plus SVOD. Because that's how much time our content uh, financing takes, utna production delay ho jata hai. So we are looking at award as a plus. I think uh, he very rightly explained it when we were discussing during lunch. If this is a chunk, there's a top layer that comes on it. For us, because this is sorted, that top layer is again adding to it's the jam. So when the bread is sorted, I think the jam really works, if I may. But actually, you picked up a very valid point. It's the average cart value of an Indian customer which is painful. And like you rightly said, the volumes are lower from US, UK, Middle East, and that's fine because the average cart value is far higher, right? So you made a very interesting point in there, you know, talking about, uh, you know, diverting audiences, right? So my next question is, uh, you know, centered around that, that, um, so how do you battle, right? Um, other platforms like cable TV, etc. when it comes to, you know, acquisition of audiences, which Divya also mentioned some time ago, right? That there are other sort of players, verticals or podcasts or eating into, you know, the market share of streaming platforms. So Zubin, we can start with you. So I don't really treat it as competition. I treat it as complementing because uh, we also run a YouTube channel. We also work with most of the cable operators. We work with all the telcos. 
Uh, we work with a ton of ISPs on the B2B side. So uh, when we look at that, we say that, okay, there is some amount of content on YouTube. And like I mentioned earlier, that we have some part of it on AWARD to lure customers in. We also have a Gujarati channel, let's say, on YouTube. And I look at that as a way to open the funnel as such and give that free content or one episode free on YouTube as well. So that when my customer comes there, the end screen of that says, come down to the OTT to continue. So that in a way works well for us. And uh, when it comes to other B2B segments like cable and telecom and all the others, we have B2B partnerships with them, which are complementing in nature. And we do carve outs wherever you want complete exclusivity and wherever it's partial, we make sure that uh, there is enough uh, bank for the buck for those kind of deals. Sorry, I didn't understand the question. Can I just go back to the basics for a minute? The basic question you're asking me is, Tumara restaurant is good, but बहुत सारे रेस्टोरेंट ढाबा फाइव स्टार कॉफी शॉप्स भी हैं अभी तुम बिजनेस कैसे लाती हो इज दैट व्हाट द बिजनेस क्वेश्चन इज ओके इन द देसी लैंग्वेज या आई बिलीव इन बीइंग देसी ओके सो हियर्स द आंसर गाइस इट इज लाइक एनी अदर बिजनेस डस राइट एंड आई हैव डन टेलीकॉम आई हैव डन ब्रॉडकास्ट आई हैव डन रिटेल व्हाट डू यू डू हाउ डू यू हाउ डू यू क्रिएट अ ब्रांड नेम a certain amount of loyal customers, which is very difficult in this business. And how do you keep your audience engaged? Plus, how do you ensure that they get those benefits, which they may not get anywhere, right? So maybe I will, in a very small nominal amount of subscription, give them five screens simultaneously, right? Uh, I will let them enjoy one episode free and then sign up if you really like the episode. I do a lot of cross-sell, upsell. We use a lot of organic retention strategies and tools. I won't say I use much of AI and ML to do this, but I think we work on a lot of common sense. The common sense is be present where you think the customer is going to be, right? So we do a lot of work with short format apps. We do lot of work with UGC. So basically we invite a lot of audiences to engage with us, to work with us, you know, right from a content to contest to content creation to maybe even predicting storylines. So we get the audiences engaged. Why is my platform better than the other platform? Not really. If you like the content, you'll stay back, right? And Today, an average audience will not pay for more than two and a half platforms. That's a given. I am a content owner and I have four uh, subscriptions, but that's, I'm an anomaly. I'm not real life. In real life, the Indian consumer still cribs about the subscription amount that he's paying for the platform. So you have to give a lot of freebies. You have to work hard with the customer. There's, there's nothing called me shouting from a PR perspective that, listen, alt is better than everybody else. It doesn't work. The consumer has to see value. So you work with various mediums and you make consumers see value. Some will see value, some will stay on. Otherwise, this industry probably faces, and let me be very honest about it, almost 70% churn month on month, right? That's a big dent. And that's what all the leaders and all the digital owners are constantly trying to fix, work with, and any platform that has got a great organic engagement and subscription rate, I think is the winner. If you guys crack that code, you've, you've got it right. Rohit? So, we can't negotiate with the laws of physics. There are only so many hours in a day. Uh, there's only so much entertainment budget, time budget that a person has. And uh, yeah, at some level, Instagram is competition. But at another level, Instagram is cooperation. It's uh, helping me acquire maybe 30,000 installs a day. So um, it depends on how you look at it. Uh, it's competition, yes. Uh, but if it's ad supported, then it's also a good place to go and fish for users. Dave, how does that work for you as far as, you know, YouTube is concerned? See, like I said, uh, 
for us primarily we don't make content for youtube and as a content production house i can now talk about this aspect there is a certain difference in the grammar for tv content versus digital content versus again svod and youtube content uh, we fortunately operate in the kids category so and primarily every show of ours whether it is a motu patlu or a bajrangi or a t2 or any of the shows there's a primary broadcaster that's attached so what happens is the broadcaster snp and we are in a category where that plays a very very big role so uh, because somewhere you know the boundaries of uh, there are a lot of easy things easier things in especially in youtube because it's an egalitarian free for all kind of platform so i think what worked in our favor was the fact that so much of produced for television content which is indirectly parental approval sort content that's available i think that really helps because most of our kids our primary audiences are 4 to 9 they don't have their own of course in, i'm talking when we started out in a pre pandemic era they didn't have their own devices they're logging in obviously the parents get a notification and stuff like that so somewhere there is an active parental sanction that chal dekh le bhai acha tv pe aa raha hai to acha hoga safe hoga disney ka show hai ya nickelodeon ka show hai ya cartoon network pe aata tha to acha hoga so that really helps us we've not yet dabbled into creating originals we did try to make a few rhyme videos uh, but what we realized essentially and uh, i think somewhere everyone has said this point when just the way people go for content every creator also has a certain signature style so we are the champions in a particular category which is your 4 to 9 hardcore entertainment animation to so, प्री स्कूल का एक ग्रामर बहुत अलग है स्पेशली राइम्स का वगैरह जो होता है जो कुड हैव बीन पोटेंशियली यूट्यूब ओरिजिनल कॉन्टेंट एट वी कुड हैव प्रोड्यूस्ड वी ट्राइड आर हैंडेड इट वी गॉट लिमिटेड सक्सेस बट वॉट हैपन्स इज वेन यू आर यू नो दिस काइंड ऑफ अ नेटवर्क और अ कंपनी दैट हैज डन ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड डिफरेंट थिंग्स योर यार्ड स्टिक्स ऑफ सक्सेस ऑल्सो अच्छा अच्छा इतना ही आर ओ आया आया तो वो उतना सक्सेसफुल नहीं है दो यू नो बाई इट सेल्फ इट इज स्टिल अ मोनिकर ऑफ सक्सेस but you have your own record to beat because when we look at content achar ye itna hai na isko main tv mein bhej dunga itne whatever itne lakh mein bhej dunga ott pe utne lakh mein bhej dunga itne lakh agar mujhe youtube se kamane hai to nani yaad aa jayegi i mean i'm sure uh, everyone in the company has their own personal goals as well we don't want to look at it like that so the day that starts happening we would start possibly looking at creating originals the other problem that we faced 3 years ago i think we were talking about it earlier where uh, youtube got badly hit by uh, the copa guidelines child online privacy protection act and we actually got an official email which said that your revenues this year will drop by 70% at least that was on email yeah so, but on email it was 70 so actual drop was far more so because we didn't produce for it we did not really suffer the backlash of it and i have been on several of these youtube enabled panels where we've spoken with fellow content creators where we would be these tv guys who just tv ka mal dump kar dete hain hum to youtube ke liye original banate hain and of course rightfully so there are certain other players who do it so beautifully for that but then my heart goes out to those players when the drop when you have one source of revenue which was something that we plan because what happens is and i speak as a content creation company right now when you have so many platforms this windowing is really people keep saying that you know content creation is the it's now is the time for us yes it is the time for us we can window the content we can monetize the same content on tv and on ott what it means is in certain content cases we make a lot of money in certain cases we are in a position to push the boundaries of quality because animation uh, is an industry which is fairly capital intensive it has a long gestation phase it is very very difficult to get organized finance in this business you know to get that investment when we talk to a platform also our association uh, rather our presence really started with their company and motu patlu and viacom 18 uh, sort of go hand in hand that was our first ip we had no idea the kind of struggle that we went through to make that show viable and we took a significant dip in the cost or in the revenue rather because we had no choice it was either do service work internationally or if you want to try in india 
we went to nick nick has been one of the best platform relationships that we've had but when we started out the budgets were not there because they were also dabbling in the category again and coming to tv right now it all you know we we can talk about multiple things but it all really comes down to where does one make the money from like she rightly said i want the consumer in tv's case it's advertising the advertising in the kids category was under index so our budgets are low but actually our production costs are high when you have to produce everything in animation so how does one work around so this dual window helps this additional layer of jam from youtube helps so i don't actually have rambled a lot your question was something else i'm really sorry that's okay so uh, moving on to our thank you for that dev thank you for the wonderful insights moving on to our next question and you know um, i'd like to start with zubin that um, you know till now we've actually spoken about the acquisition right of audiences how do we bring the audiences onto our platform how do we bring business post we bring them to the platform um, you know how do we engage them right how do we make sure they're engaged and divya of course you know touched upon a few points previously so uh, i'm sure you all have heard of this fancy technology called ai everyone have you heard of this newer technology called hi just look it up it's called human intelligence <laughs> so uh, we use a lot of human intelligence in our uh, in our operations on shimaru me the ott uh, whenever a customer comes on board uh, of course that's part of the acquisition story that's done we look at lots of metrics whether the guy what kind of content has he watched before subscribing after logging in bef before paying and after paying so what that actually gives us is a great insight as to why he's come initially and why he seriously bought thereafter we do welcome calling to the customer just to say hey welcome aboard probably we are the only ott i'm not sure if anyone else does this but we actually call out call our customers through an outbound call center physically manned human again uh where we call and we just tell them listen this is the thing and and to be honest the 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 tg of our audiences is roughly around 35 40 plus maybe little older and the gujarati audience especially in gujarat and the hinterland of gujarat does need a bit of hand holding and we've understood this insight we've picked this up very carefully to see that the customers really are taken care of and not just lost in this digital acquisition drive when they come on board in our service and uh, that's precisely what we what we do uh cut to when we then we start looking at consumption behavior patterns on seeing exactly how much the customers using we break them up into zero uh light medium and heavy users and then we start looking at forecasting saying what will a light user do in the next 3 months will he renew or not renew because renewal is the most important metric for the success of an sword platform because eventually the holy grail of all of this is your cac should be one third of your ltv only then you'll make a profitable business so as a product person i would say that the thing that drives engagement most is great content uh, of course but uh, assuming all things are equal and content is good uh, from a product standpoint uh, what are the ways in which people consume content on ott services only three main routes uh, search discovery and marketing on deck marketing that is uh i'm talking about on deck once they have opened the app uh, then uh, so yeah search or uh, browse slash discover or uh, marketing on deck marketing uh search is pretty straight forward the code was cracked by google 20 years ago and the basics remain same uh, just give useful results accurate results give them fast have a uh, second best result uh, for example if you search for the movie tamasha on goat i don't have tamasha but i do have adil a mushkil perhaps that's if you look if you're looking for a ranbir love story here here is one so uh, search is just really doing the basics uh, right and uh, following the lead of uh, the category leaders like google on your uh, on your service our uh, discovery is uh, mostly uh, merchandising uh, we rely uh, quite a bit on ai for uh, for that uh, we believe that ott services are a theater of one and uh, human editors can only go so far as deciding 
uh, in deciding what exactly works for everyone in this room. Uh, I think about uh, about 90% of our tiles, we call those things that you click on are tiles, about 90% of them are uh, affected by machine uh, intervention uh, at some level. Um, On-deck marketing is about promoting your show to people who are already on your app. Uh, I mean, why go outside? Pehle jo aare hai, app mein take their uh, attention first. And the TV guys cracked this many years ago. I think the digital guys just get too clever with things. I mean, just you know, if you're an ad supported business, you will have remnant inventory, uh, you will have house ads, uh, you know, that you can show for your other shows that that is the number one driver of uh, engagement for us on deck. Uh, but even otherwise, uh, off deck, uh, push notifications, emails, uh, you know, the drill, but it's mostly about being helpful to the user, being contextual to the user's uh, context. And, uh, and that's what uh, and, and of course, you need great content. Uh, that's what drives engagement for us, really. Divya, would you like to add on? I think mostly it's covered, right? Um, of course, you do a lot of personalized feeds. You do a lot of personalized push notifications. You do a lot of cross-sell, upsell. You also use a lot of reco cycles, right, to recommend the likes of... And of course, you use unashamedly your app inventory or your website inventory. So right from, you know, the in-app poster to the display uh, panels on the top to creating a FOMO about a particular show on the platform which is newly launched or you may want to push consumption on. So yes, a marketer will try, I think, every single tactic in the book to get the consumption going up. Uh, I think uh, when the consumer lands... Uh, the first 24 hours are the most critical hours, honestly, for him to, you know, open the app and get engaged. Because if he's hooked in the first 24 hours, he's bound to take an action. And that's what we've understood. For me, the largest pain point is uh, two. One, the consumer's seen the first episode, but not subscribed to see the rest of the series. And I like to delve deep into it myself. Of course, the analytics team keeps doing their analysis. And like Zubin said, we rely a lot on human intelligence because there are certain nuances which human intelligence brings out, which AI and ML can't. It's just quantity. Uh, also, the l other pain point is he's gone to the subscription page. He's chosen a pack and he's fallen off. So these are two biggest pain points for any SVOD platform, which we get into a deeper analysis of and... Being greedy the way we are, we like to engage more and more with such consumer because he's the low-hanging fruit and I definitely want him to convert. Yes. So that leads me actually to my next question. Um, and we can start with Rohit. Um, so Rohit, what is the churn rate, you know, for the platform? Copcoms will kill me if I pub publish my numbers uh, publicly. Uh, but in general, uh, there's a steep cliff on day one itself. Uh, it's a bit like people walking into a store in a mall and then saying, oh, I'm in the wrong store and walking out of that place. So there's a very steep decline right up, right at the door. Uh, and then it kind of flattens over a period of time. So our, uh, our uh, uh, retention challenges are mostly defective acquisition challenges. Uh, the, you know, uh, people came into Woot expecting something and they didn't like, let's say for example, they came into Woot expecting edgy content, there isn't much, so then uh, they leave. So, uh, so yeah, it's really at the top. After that, it kind of flattens. Sorry, can you just repeat that uh, question again? What is the churn rate? Churn rate, okay. So, uh, so let me say what we do to combat churn, it'll be an easier way to handle that. So, uh, <laughs> Our objective, just think of it this way, you're going to the customer once and you're telling him you've got some great piece of content. So we don't tell him pricing at the time of advertising. If he likes that content, he'll come and he'll land onto what is known as our plans page. And there he has a choice to choose various plans. What we do is we make sure that we've got three or four different uh, plans, which are two yearly, yearly and quarterly. And we make sure that uh, the pricing is such that it kind of 
entices the customer to take the two yearly. Therefore, we, with the same acquisition cost, we're increasing our ARPU and therefore we increase our uh, LTV as well. So that's the formula that we use at least. Let's, let's all unashamedly accept it, right? Uh, the industry standards are 70% and we are fighting it every day, right? It's not easy. Uh, and that's why I said it earlier in one of the uh, questions I answered that if as a platform you have managed to crack the code of organic retention renewal strategy well, then you have some hope. Uh, the churn percentage is pretty high. You're in the business of entertainment. It's fickle. The person is going to hop. It's bar hopping. It's as simple as that. Today this is happening. Today this is not happening. Tomorrow you may be happening and I'll come back to you. So it's a constant fight. Why not? So what do you think is the reason? I mean, is it content or, you know, marketing or, you know, any other reason? No, I don't think it's content or marketing. It is about... Uh, the fact that I want to see this. So, right. I mean, you could also say, listen, for example, while coming here, I saw a uh, hoarding and, you know, it interested me and that led to me watching the trailer. Uh, now, the trailer could be so exciting that I might decide to log on, subscribe to the platform and watch that particular content. And maybe the initial, normally in 15 minutes, I decide whether this content is worth continuing over or you just drop out, right? Uh, so it's not just content, it's not just marketing, it's, it's a combination of things, right? The churn is also about the fact that your life situation changes. So for example, we've recently been seeing reports about the fact that how a very prominent global platform has lost lakhs of subscribers and, you know, $40 billion market cap, right? <laughs> there is no dearth of content over there, right? But life situation of viewers have changed. We are back to pre-COVID era, right? So there are various factors. You can't really pinpoint and say, hey, the marketing was bad, so I lost subscriber. Hey, the content was bad, so I lost the subscriber. It's a multifarious engagement exercise that you have to be conscious of at all given points of time. That's what I say. What about, what will you like to add, Zubin, to this? Yeah, so I see it as uh, the entire, uh, the premise of someone coming to our platform and making sure that he stays on our platform. We just want to make sure that whatever we give him at the point of time is something that one, he wants. And then we know for a fact, as she rightly pointed out, that the biggest competition we are all in is time in the day. Like I think even Rohit pointed out, 24 hours in the day and that's all you have. What are you doing with that 24 hours in the day? In the lockdown phase, you were, all you were doing is maybe jhadu katka and then back to work from home and then taking a bit of idle time off or sleeping during meetings, whatever, I don't know. But at that point in time, you had more available time for consumption of content. Now, whenever we talk to customers and ask them, we do VOCs with customers and ask them, the first thing is time nahi hai. And uh, whether we like it or not, I think that is something we'll have to figure out. At the end of the day, he's also competing with saying, jo time hai, I want to make sure that I use that time to view the best content that I want to watch. And that could be competing, something that, that maybe Alt has or Woot has, I may not have and therefore they'll win. Sometimes I'll have something that they may lose out on. So that's finally the, the answer to that point. Rohit, your two cents on this. So there's some amount of natural churn in this uh, category because consumers have a polygamous relationship with OTT apps. Nobody commits to anyone. Uh, and then there are cycles, like Zubin said, there is a big launch on some, some place and uh, I may have two weekends without any new launch. So then, you know, I'm on, on a weaker weekend at that time. So there are some cycles as well. Uh, and then there are a hazard reasons why people abandon your service when they do. It's mostly uh, it's mostly on the content side in terms of disconnect between the kind of content I want to see versus what I have. Like for example, if you want to see live cricket today, there isn't much on Woot. So, kya karega koi uh, And then there are ways in which 
us ott provider shoot us else in the foot uh, our apps crash somebody said buffering you mentioned people abandoning uh, payment flows so uh, yeah i mean uh, so there there are errors of commission uh, that that also happen that cause uh, consumers to churn but it's mostly a combination of natural uh, the natural character of this category cycles uh content disconnects content cycles and then finally uh, uh shoot yourself in the foot kind of errors with this we come to our last question uh which is a little creative <laughs> so what would be your marketing pitch to reel the audience seated out here to watch your streaming platform we could start with divya in that order please देख लो यार ऑल बाला जी सस्ता है हाँ उत्ते का तो कॉफी भी पी लेते होंगे तुम लोग एक बार में मैं उत्ते में तुम्हें महीने का एंटरटेनमेंट दे दूंगी एंड द बेस्ट पार्ट इज दैट एकता कपूर जो आ, क्या बोलते हैं उसको आपको क्योंकि सास भी कभी बहू बता दिखाती थी ना आज की डेट में शी इज मेकिंग सम रियली प्रोग्रेसिव कॉन्टेंट लाइक कोडेम एंड द मैरिड वुमन सो आई थिंक ऑल द वन आउट हेयर शुड डेफिनेटली सब्सक्राइब टू ऑल बालाजी एंड मैन शुड डू इट ऑन द फेयर ऑफ मिसिंग आउट ऑफ इंटेलिजेंट वुमेन कॉन्टेंट राइट सो ऑल देखना बनता है यार प्लीज my pitch is uh, woot is entertainment ka super app so please come to woot i'm selling it mainly to the b2b customers so i'm i'm telling everyone mere to teen customers saath mein baithe hue hain yahan pe potentially please start focusing on more animation kids animation we can do family animation we can do adult animation let's just more consume more animation sare shows cosmos maya se banaye hain so all i'll say is uh, if you want to have a good time uh, come to shamarumi we'll give you a family oriented ott uh, gujarati ma jo hoy to gujarati ma jo hindi mein dekhna hai to hindi mein dekho and uh, there's lots and lots of content available over 20000 hours of content all there on multiple platforms whether you're sitting back and leaning back and watching on tv or whether you want to lean forward and watch on your small screen come to shamarumi download now and uh, i'll hope to see many more subscriptions today evening when i go back the coupon code bhi de do yaar fir itna bol raha we just talked about low arpus right mehenge ho gaye ho yaar thank you very very much let me cut your subscription here to mehenge ho gaye ho thank you very very much to all our panelists seated out here a very warm thank you to witnet to indian television team and most importantly to the man mr anil vanwari thank you for giving us the 6th edition of witnet 2022 thank you